Greetings, I'm Laura Puchaval Torta. Welcome to episode 29 of my podcast, B is for Bisexual. I'm a content creator, writer, and filmmaker, also an attorney in my spare time. Today, I feel like talking about filmmaking because I'm about to begin shooting the third episode of the Disease Detective series available on the Tubi channel and soon coming to Cineverse. The first two episodes of the Disease Detective are about sarcoidosis and ataxia. Next, we'll be looking at aphasia. I expect that aphasia episode to be up and running in October of this year, 2023. Also available on Tubi and Amazon is my feature comedy film, Bermuda, and lots of other films like The Art House and Queen of the Road and Disability. Today on B is for Bisexual, we're beginning a story with new characters, Grandma and B. Reading with me today are my son, Dante. Hello. And my husband, Marco. Hi. And now the short story, Grandma and B. Grandma Lorenza's lawyer son, Alberto, looked commanding in an apron. He was the shit of suburbia. He was the hot dog honcho. He was barbecue man. It was summer in the South, and this was the end of August back to school ritual. Grandma sizzled with anger. Her son's backyard party was populated by his complacent wife, Winnie, and by several 1950s plastic-coated neighbors, Tiffany, Muffy, and their spouses. It was sort of like that old show, Leave it to Beaver, without the butch acting mother. But this was the 2020s, and Grandma Lorenza was worried about her granddaughter Beatrice, who was dressing like a 15-year-old Phyllis Schlafly and acting like a snarky maniac. Grandma had seen the consequences of this boiling revenge stuff on her job as a prison guard, and she did not want it repeated in her family. Down with the patriarchy, yes, but no need to silence the neighborhood bullies. Let them play it out. Their innate idiocy would silence them soon enough. Grandma Lorenza sighed. Oh, when her partner Constance died, Grandma had moved from her large loft in the city to a house across the street from her son in order to protect Beatrice from this suburban zoo. But the going was rough. The female crushing attitudes surrounding the houses like monstrous shrubbery were driving Grandma bananas. If Constance were still alive, she never would have put up with it. Grandma was afraid that Beatrice would try harder and harder to fit in a criminal task for anybody with a brain. And Beatrice had a brain. She just didn't realize it yet. The neighbors were hovering around Alberto, who was grilling the meat and zucchini. You must be pleased that your mother moved across the street, said Tiffany, hanging on to Alberto's arm. One more tug and she would dip his elbow into the coals. The zucchini cooked and smoked. Oh, yeah, I'm pleased, said Alberto sarcastically. He forked a hot dog and turned it on the grill. Who wouldn't want their mother across the street, spying on them? It was pretty bad for us all when she retired from her job at Lake Murray Prison. I see what you mean, said Tiffany, turning to stare at Lorenza. Grandma waved the fly swatter. Hello, Tiffany. Your high heels are poking holes in our lawn. Alberto sighed. My mother needs something to do. Tiffany threw back her head and laughed, a tinkling laugh. Ha 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 ha. Nobody realized that Grandma Lorenza never joked, not ever. Winnie hovered around Beatrice in a mother-daughter tete-a-tete. She put her arm around Beatrice's shoulders. So sorry to hear that your friend, Dennis, is in the hospital. Oh, he'll be out in time for the football game. Beatrice sighed. She was wearing a neat tennis costume and a sun hat and did not seem happy about this. Grandma made a forking malocchio sign at Beatrice. The girl needed to be more careful or she would end up on a wanted poster. 
Beatrice frowned and crossed her arms over her chest. I heard he had a bad allergic reaction, fell on the floor right in the cafeteria, said neighbor Fluffy Muffy, energized by this tragedy. Yeah, it must be so hard to avoid peanuts all the time, said Beatrice. They're everywhere. Grandma jerked her head and motioned with the fly swatter for Beatrice to meet her across the street. Oh, okay, gotta go, said Beatrice. She broke away from the circle of concerned women and walked toward her grandmother's house. Grandma Lorenza knew that she had one thing on her side, Beatrice's fear. When Beatrice entered the screened-in porch, Grandma said, Did you kill that boy? What? No, he just wanted to try a peanut butter cup. That kind of thing can land you in jail, said Grandma. Be more careful, please. I have bigger plans for you, like medical school or plumbing. Dennis isn't dead, said Beatrice. I made him a little bit sick. He was looking at cheerleader with his googly eyes. A cheerleader, said Grandma. <laughs> would serve him right. That would be my, like making love to a plastic doll or a pickle jar. I had to do something, said Beatrice. No, you didn't. You never have to do anything. Revenge against stupid people is unnecessary. Wait long enough and they will self-destruct. Beatrice tapped her foot. Maybe I can't wait that long. Grandma switched on a boombox and began dancing to Demi Lovato's Sorry, Not Sorry. Think about this song. Demi is not sorry because she's having a good time. So you need to have a good time. Stop concentrating on Dennis. Beatrice hung her head. When is the next football practice? Tomorrow afternoon. Well, meet me at the football field around 4 o'clock, and I'll introduce you to the world of self-destruction. The next day, they drove to the football field and climbed high up into the bleachers. Grandma was dressed the same as usual in colorful hippie pants and a t-shirt. Beatrice had unpressed designer shorts from Target and a straw hat. Her face was laden with makeup. When are you going to loosen up, asked Grandma. Wipe that gunk off your face. She handed Beatrice a pair of binoculars. Beatrice stared down at the football field. What are we looking at? It was 100 degrees and the players were getting ready to run laps. Dennis was the quarterback. Take a look at their drink selection, said Grandma. When you exercise in hot weather, you drink water, right? Beatrice nodded. Near the benches, the football players had coolers filled with ice, plastic water bottles, and a few energy drinks. Below them, the red-faced coach was telling the players to go, go, go. Dennis looked droopy, maybe because he had just gotten out of the hospital after the peanut butter cup incident. He chose an energy drink. He glugged it down. Grandma Lorenza noticed that Dennis's hair was neatly coiffed. What was up with these teenagers? When would they ever learn to relax and enjoy life? When would they ever learn to make up their own mind, especially about their hair? After quaffing the energy drink, Dennis began jumping around. He was like SpongeBob on steroids. Grandma Lorenza felt like shouting down to him to take it easy, son, take it easy. But then she remembered that he had hurt Beatrice, the most important person in the world. Dennis shot off around the perimeter of the football field. He went fast for about half of the way. Around the middle, he slowed down and collapsed. Beatrice let out a sharp cry as Coach and the other players went running over. Oh no, Dennis! Our work here is done, said Grandma. We didn't do any work, said Beatrice. Exactly. They climbed down the bleachers and climbed into Grandma's lime green Kia Soul. But Beatrice was sad, and Grandma, for once, had very little to say. Soon you'll be learning how to drive, said Grandma, who was an aggressively bad driver, but trying hard to overcome her emotions on the road. Yeah, then I can run people down, said Beatrice with a crass look on her face. Grandma shook her head. The answer is not racing. The answer is ridicule, like this 
Ho, ho, ho. Look at that hairy guy cutting me off. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Said Beatrice laconically. He's got Pelosi arms. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Make a simian face at him as we pass. He, he, he. Beatrice contorted her face into a chimpanzee grin as they passed. He, ha, ho. Give him the Malocchio sign. Hey, hey. Now flip him off with both hands. Ha, ha, ha. Passing the offending car, they flipped off the driver, jumping both hands into the air. Grandma put her foot down and accelerated. Beatrice stared out the back window. A blue light. It's the police. Oh, no, said Grandma. Not again. Boop, 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 boop. The next day, $85 poorer, Grandma texted Beatrice to meet her at her new house around 5 p.m. She had laid out homemade oatmeal cookies and plain iced tea. It was the time of day when everyone wanted a snack, especially a teenage girl. What are we doing? said Beatrice, munching a cookie. I have to meet my poetry club at the sandwich shop for dinner. Grandma thought the poetry club sounded boring, but she knew it was very important for Beatrice to have friends. I hope you're reading Howl, she said. That's poetry. What is Howl? Something by Allen Ginsberg you need to read, said Grandma. Come over here. This window is our lookout. Grandma sat down facing a side window and patted the seat next to her for Beatrice to join her. Grandma had her binoculars, and Beatrice's were on the floor under her chair. I live next door to Dr. Garan, my internal medicine doctor, said Grandma. Wow, a doctor. What do you want, a cookie or something? Said Beatrice sarcastically. I don't need a cookie, said Grandma, but maybe some soft pretzels. Grandma lifted her binoculars. Beatrice did the same. A few minutes later, a car from Delicious Cake Delivery pulled up in front of the doctor's house. You bought him a cake? Said Beatrice. That's not allowing pure self-destruction to happen on its own. That's taking action. Maybe, said Grandma. He has 137 morbidly obese patients. We all pitched in for the cake. It's his birthday. The delivery kid brought the wide cake to the front door. They could see Dr. Garan answering the door and looking in surprise at the cake. I didn't order this, he said. The delivery kid shrugged. Uh, It says that it's a gift from your patients. Dr. Garan nodded and took the cake inside. Grandma and Bee shifted their seats to another window so they could see inside his kitchen. The doctor cut himself a piece of cake and stuffed it into his mouth. Slow down, cowboy, said Grandma. That cake is for 12 people. After a few moments of active eating, the doctor put his hands on his head in dismay, punched his own belly very hard, and then moved to the bathroom. Let's keep an eye on him, said Grandma. Luckily, the doctor lived without a wife. His bathroom had a window without curtains. He took off his clothes and got onto the scale. Ugh said Beatrice, laying down her binoculars. I can't watch. Look at those chopstick legs, said Grandma. He's standing on the scale. He looks worried and a little sick. That's enough for me. Grandma raised her hand, and Beatrice gave her a reluctant high five. This is fun, right, said Grandma. Beatrice shook her head. No, if we're going to spy on neighbors, let them be better looking. Boop, 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 boop. Beatrice invited Grandma to meet her at school one Friday afternoon. What are we doing here? said Grandma, who was waiting for Bee outside near the smoking area. I hope you haven't taken up tobacco products. Ugh, no, said Beatrice. We're waiting for Pew. Pew? Who is Pew? Uh, My English teacher. She's banning books, you know, the ones that I like to read. What? Like Toni Morrison? No, Pew, no. Jesse Andrews? No, Pew, no. Margaret Atwood? Wait, Marge Atwood, the greatest writer of our time? Grandma was aghast at the stupidity. Atwood was a genius of social conscience and a champion of women everywhere. If children could not read intelligent stories outside their comfort zones, maybe, how could they learn anything? 
We have to stop her. Yes, but how? Uh, maybe we can talk to her. She's the teacher. She makes the rules. You always say the rules are important. Beatrice had a point. Maybe we can get her fired. We'd have, we'd have to fire the entire school district. Pew must be stopped right now. They rounded the corner of the school. A stern woman was leaning against the bricks, smoking angry. Uh, Grandma, this is Mrs. Pugh. Mrs. Pugh looked at Grandma. I'll show you who needs to be stopped. Follow me. Mrs. Pugh led Grandma and Beatrice to the football field. There was a political rally. Signs and little American flags everywhere. Near the center of the field was a podium. Behind the podium was Alberto, Grandma's son. Beatrice's father. He was shouting at the crowd like he was incensed. Winnie was watching. I am a lawyer, and I know what is right for kids and for everybody. Grandma Lorenza called out in a sick voice. What are you doing, son? Sarah Pugh looked at Grandma and Beatrice with a knowing glare. I told you, your son is ruining our democracy, and I need to keep my job. Parents need to control where their kids read, shouted Alberto. Not in this universe. Grandma raised her fist like a cartoon fight. Winnie clasped her hands over her chest. Isn't he wonderful? Nothing about sex or anything natural, said Alberto. Nature is the enemy. Beatrice was turning green. Dad, stop. Nothing about gay people. Been gay since 1958, said Grandma. She picked up one of the cheap American flags stuck in the ground around the podium. Nothing about immigrants. Hey, stupid, your father was an immigrant. Alberto pounded the podium. Unless they're related to me. And women should stay at home. Take care of the family. Stop challenging men's intelligence. That's it. Wielding her small flag... Grandma stepped up to the podium and shoved her son aside. She addressed the the crowd. I'm sorry to admit to the world, this is my son. Grandma began hitting Alberto with the flag and swatting him with her fly swatter. Alberto grabbed a flag and began dueling with his mother. Grandma, stop! shouted Beatrice. When it became evident that Grandma was winning... Beatrice bounded up to the podium and separated Grandma from her father, effectively saving her father's life. Alberto ran off. At another neighborhood barbecue, hosted by Winnie and Alberto, Grandma and Alberto appear bruised and beaten up. Grandma, with a red scar on her forehead, was talking privately with Beatrice, who was dressed more casually than before and carrying a boombox. She was wearing a tie-dye dress and a colorful headband. I'm happy you made up with Dad, said Beatrice. He's an asshole, but he controls all your money. Beatrice grabbed Grandma's arm. Calm down. Remember, he will self-destruct eventually. That may take too long. Winnie walked over unsteadily carrying an alcoholic drink, looking stupidly solicitous. Mother L, are you feeling all right? Are you okay? Are you sure? Fine, fine, I'm fine. I'm so glad you made up with Alberto. Family, we all need to stick together. Or stick it to each other. Beatrice smiled. (laughs) That's what I said. When he smiled. Did you hear that Alberto has a new hobby? It's dangerous and expensive. Let me guess. Cross-dressing? No, no. It's much better than that. Hang gliding! Winnie took a swig of her drink. I don't believe I care to participate in that one. Woo-hoo! shouted Grandma. Beatrice turned into some foot-stomping music on the boombox. Grandma's feet and knees started wobbling to the beat. She waved her arms like noodles. Beatrice and Winnie joined Grandma in a dance around the yard. They danced pretty well. The end. I want to say thank you, everybody. I would love to hear comments on Beatrice and Grandma, see if people like these characters. I might start up some subscriptions so that people can do that. But 
Until next time, happy listening. Ciao. Ciao, a presto. 